Welcome back to VLA Cybers. I am your VLA Cyber buddy here. And today, let's look at and explore what are all the fields in VLA Cyber. Whether you are a student, an engineer, or just curious about how tiny chips are made, this video will give you a clear understanding of different spe specializations in VLA Cyber. So let's get started. Here's a pathway of different fields which come under semiconductors. Here we have digital design, analog design, physical design, design verification, EDA tool development, and embedded systems. So these are the different fields which come under the VLSI domain and which you can explore and uh, take your niche which you like. First up is digital design and analog design. So digital design, this is one of the core areas of VLSI where we focus on designing digital circuits using logic gates, flip-flops and other digital components. Digital design focuses on creating circuits that work with discrete values like zeros and ones. So it involves logic gates, combinational logic, sequential logic, finite state machines, etc. Engineers in this field work on creating and building blocks of digital systems such as processors, memory units, digital signal, custom digital circuits, and even digital signal processing. So if you enjoy working with these Boolean logic and design complex digital system, this might be the field for you. Next, we have analog design. Unlike digital design, which deals with discrete values, discrete signals, analog design involves continuous signals. This field is critical for designing components like amplifiers, oscillators, and analog to digital converters. So it deals with continuous signals such as voltage, current, power, etc. So operational amplifiers, analog to digital converters, filters, sensors, interfaces are some of the applications which you may design in analog design domain. Engineers must have a deep understanding of circuit theory and electronic devices. The challenges which you come across when you are dealing with natural signals or continuous signals, which are highly fluctuating signals, are noise, linearity, temperature, and process variation, which are highly difficult to control. So if you love working with signals and enjoy the challenges of design circuits, that real-world analog design is your field to go. So next up, we go for design and verification. All right, let's switch gears. In the design and verification field, it's all about ensuring the design works perfectly under all conditions before it's sent off for the fabrication. Verification is like being a detective who checks every corner of mistake that could lead to a bug in the final product. So let's see what are the subfields which are related to the uh, design and verification. First up is simulation based verification, formal verification, code coverage driven verification, and static timing. So let's discuss simulation based verification and coverage driven verification in the next slide. So what is this term called as formal verification? Right. So formal verification has three subcategories. Those are equivalence checking, property checking, and model checking. Equivalence checking, this process verifies that different levels of design like RTL to gate level necklace are functionally identical. So it's like checking that 
two versions of the script tells the same story even if wordings are different. Next, uh, next up is property checking. Engineers define specific properties as assertions that the design must always satisfy. Example, signal X should never be high when signal Y is low. Formal tools mathematically prove these properties ensure no corner cases are missed. Model checking. This method involves checking the design against a formal model of expected behavior, ensuring that all possible states are verified. So like ensuring the puzzle fits together perfectly in every possible way without any pieces being So next up, we have static timing analysis. The so static timing analysis deals with basically timing-related aspects and timing closures and timing-related issues such as setup and hold analysis. We have design and verification. The two major categories are simulation-based verification and coverage-driven verification. So simulation-based verification has three subcategories, behavioral simulation, test bench creation, and functional simulation. Behavioral simulation, early in the design process, engineers simulate the RTL code to verify that if the behavior behaves, sorry, the design behaves, as expected under different scenarios, right? So test bench creation, engineers create a test bench, which is a simulated environment to test the RTL code. This includes stimulus, input signals, and monitors the output signal. So it basically provides an input signal. So we write a test bench code, which provides some uh, combinations of input signals in order to test the output signal, we are getting it as predicted or not to see if the design responds correctly. The functional stimulus, functional stimulus simulation, the test bench runs various test cases to verify the functionality of the design before they become costly. So next up is coverage driven verification. It also has three main categories. Code coverage, functional coverage, and random test. Code coverage. This metric means how much of the RTL code has been exercised by the test bench. Higher code coverage indicates fewer untested areas, reducing the chances of hidden bugs. Functional coverage. Beyond code coverage, this checks whether all functional scenarios, example, different input combinations, edge cases have been tested. Just like ensuring you've tested each and every possible move in a chess game. Random testing, also known as constrained random verification, this technique randomly generates input scenarios within a specified constraint to explore unexpected states that could lead to bugs. So this is all about design and verification. So if you love coding, if you love to write test benches and write uh, design using Verilog, VHDL, or Unium, design and verification is the field for you. Next up is my favorite field of all in VLSI, physical design. So physical design is where you have to draw the layout and design the block which you have. So physical design, this is a field where abstract digital design are transformed into physical layouts that can be fabricated on silicon. So physical design involves synthesis, DFT insertion, flow planning, power planning, placement, clock tree synthesis, routing, static timing analysis, and physical verification. Ensuring that timing, power, area are not compromised. So, 
Physical design in VLSI is the process of transforming a synthesized necklace into a geometrical representation that can be fabricated on a silicon wafer. So on your left hand side, you can see some of the pictures. Those are your designs, physical design layouts in real time, which are designed in standard industry standard tools, such as your PNR tools, such as version compiler, ICC2, and in our books. So let's uh, get a little brief uh, information about the phases which are linked to VLSI, physical design. First up is synthesis. So what is basically synthesis? Synthesis and DFT insertion are critical steps in the digital VLSI design flow, which ensures that the design is both functionally correct and testable after fabrication. Let's break down what each of these involves. Synthesis. So synthesis converts a high-level design language written in RTL, such as Verilog or VHDL or even UVM, into a gate-level necklace that can be physically implemented. The so key steps involve the RTL to gate-level conversion, technology mapping, optimization, and the result of synthesis is a gate-level necklace that represents the design Next stop is DFT, designed for testability. The objective of DFT is to modify the and synthesize design to include test structures that enable efficient testing of this chip after fabrication. This ensures that manufacturing defects can be detected. So the goal of, is to design the circuit in a way that makes it easier to test all internal nodes and parts for fault after the chip is manufactured. It involves scanning insertion, built-in self-test, fault coverage analysis, etc. In conclusion, DFT ensures that the manufactured chip can be tested for effects, defects effectively, which is essential for yield improvement and reliability in mass production. Since we, when we go for production in VLSI, it goes in numbers like billions and billions. So there is no scope for errors. Without proper DFT, identifying defective chips become extremely challenging and costly. So if DFT was not there, it would have been a very costly move for all of us. Next up is flow plan. So picture this. So you're building a house before you start Laying bricks, you need a blueprint, right? Floor planning in VLSI, in chip design, is kind of like that blueprint. It's the stage where we decide where each, each room, or in this case, each block or component is going to be placed out on the silicon chip. So the objective of a floor plan is to define the placement of large blocks or macros or, or IPs, like memories and cores, and allocate regions for standard cells. Those are small logic gates. So here you can see the picture of a layout of a real-time block where the boundary is a square boundary. So that square boundary is nothing but your floor plan, which uh, is being created and your IO ports and standard cells IP blocks are placed. Next stop is EDA development, tool development. So this field is all about creating the software tools that other engineers use in VLSI design. 
whether it's for simulation, layout, or verification, ADA tools are essential for modern VLSI design. So the, there are three giants which involve in EDA tool development in the whole world. Those are Synopsys, Cadence, and Siemens. These three are the only ruling tool, EDA electronic design automation tool development tool companies. Whether this is simulation, layout, or verification, ADA tools are essential for modern VLSI design. If you have strong programming skills and want to work on developing cutting-edge tools, ADA tool development could be your niche. So another field which is closely related to VLSI is embedded systems. This field involves designing and integrating hardware and software for specific applications like microcontrollers and IoT devices. So in your right hand side, you can see a small board with small integrated circuits embedded on it that is called as an embedded system, where you program that particular board to work under your scenarios and work efficiently with on cases which you want to implement on. So, and there you have it. A quick overview of the various fields in BLSI. Each of these fields offer unique challenges and opportunities together. They form the backbone of modern technology. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content on VLSI. See you in the next video.